One thing I learned actually from my ex-girlfriends is you gotta be careful what you say to a girl. You can't, you can't just say anything. Because uh, this was sort of the end of high school when I was dating my ex-girlfriend. And uh, I got really into smoking cigars with my buddies. But it was only like a once a month thing. Like we'd go out and go out to a park and smoke a cigar. <laughs> Hate it. Oh, it's stinky, it's a dirty habit. I'm like, come on, like, we only do it once a month. I mean, you do something once a month that I think is disgusting. <laughs> yes, she is my ex-girlfriend. Now I've got a new one. I'm trying to be a little more careful with this one. But I think really the fundamentals... I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into sort of a taboo subject here. But I think, I think we can all handle it. I don't, I don't want you guys to think I'm like a filthy cock on my mouth or something. But we're going to talk, I think really fundamentally, there's a fundamental thing we learned it in kindergarten. This is a really big reason why men and women don't understand each other. It's that men have penis, women have vagina. Okay? Because girls have no idea what it's like to own and operate a penis. And I think that results in a lot of misunderstanding. Okay? First off, going to the bathroom. My whole life, women, my mother, my girlfriend have been telling me, don't pee on the seat. Don't pee on the seat. Okay, you have no idea what it's like to actually have to physically handle your genitals. Okay? You don't know what that's like. Okay? Now think about it. Tonight, I mean, it's not cold, but it's not a warm night. Right now, my hands are kind of cold. Think about going in, and you're going to touch something that's been all tucked away and warm, all this little mess. I go to the bathroom, I'm, did you wash your hands, my mom says, did you wash your hands? I don't understand why I should have to do that, okay? I mean, think about it. I took a shower, and I put my wee-wee away. <laughs> my hands, my hands, they've been out in the world, they've been touching things, they've been touching... Then I go down and I touch it, if anything, I should wash my penis after <laughs> Right? awkward if it was a hand dryer, you know, the thing. This was like ocean activated, you know, like, me in, me in, me in. But the worst thing about having a penis, it has a mind of its own. You have to realize, it's like, it's like, okay, okay, try to, try to imagine, ladies, if you had a small, socially retarded Siamese twin. Okay? And you have to hang out with this thing all the time, 24-7, right? Okay? Now, that, that's what it's like living with a penis, okay? And I don't... And, and it talks to you guys, doesn't your penis talk to you? My penis has an inner monologue. My penis sounds like a little British man. Like, like Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget. I'll get you next time. <laughs> You could do it, right? I mean, you've got to have, like, some place where you need to have a clear head, 
like, oh, I'm going to take a test today. Like, just take it off, put it in the safe, <laughs> go to town. I mean, I'm sure there would be like embarrassing times when you needed it, and you were like, ah, oh, oh, my penis is at home. <laughs> An attachable penis would be very useful. But I'm going to shift topics a little bit here. Uh, talk about names. My name is uh, Ben Piper, and uh, I was thinking the other day about how, like, you're kind of you can't really pick what your name is. You're born with it, but uh, your your name kind of has gives you like constraints without you like having any control over it. Like my name is Ben Piper, and just because of that, I can never have a son named Peter. Right? And likewise, I can never have a son named Pied. Uh, but like, yeah, I mean, there's other names that have that too, like, like Ted. Like, I have a friend in the audience named Ted. I don't know where he is. Maybe he didn't get in. But uh, if your name is Ted, and you have a friend who's a drug addict, like, you can never have an intervention for them. Because you're going to come to him and be like, man, I think you have a problem. We'd be like, whatever, I'll shut up, Ted. And he'd be like, no, look at you, man, you're addicted. And then he'd be like, you're addicted, Ted. <laughs> and if you get saved by a drug addict, they're never going to quit drugs, okay? They're like, I'm on fire. They're never going to get quit. And then that friend's going to die, and you're going to think it's horrible, but just because your name is Ted. How fair is that? But I can't wait until I'm a parent, because then I'm going to get to name my own kid. But I've been thinking that there's this weird trend in uh, parents, they're naming their kids like sort of different names with weird pronunciations. Like, when you meet someone like, oh, your name is Dylan. No, man, it's Dylan. Okay. Oh, your name is Daryl. No, it's Daryl. All right. I have a friend whose name is Katie, and she spells her name like this. This is not a joke. K-A-E-T-Y-I. If you see her written down, you're like, your name is ka e -E. <laughs> But she's like, no, 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 it's like, like a K-A-E makes a K sound, and T-Y-I is T, K-A-T. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Parents can just change the sounds that letters make. I thought that letters made sounds, and I was pretty set in stone, but I guess not. So, when I'm a parent, I'm going to have a kid named XYZ, but it's going to be pronounced Timothy. <laughs> He's going to get to school and his teacher's going to be like, uh, X, Y, Z? And he's like, uh, no, it's pronounced Timothy. You see, the X makes a T sound, and Y, Z is pronounced Timothy. <laughs> I've, I've done pretty well with the name Ben Piper, uh, the name I was given, except this one time, there was one time I was at summer camp. I was at summer camp and I wanted, there was a lake there, and I wanted to rent a boat to go out on the lake. So I go to the girl who's checking out the boats, and I ask if, if I can rent the boat. And she says, oh, you know, they're all checked out right now. But uh, come back in 15 minutes and, uh, you know, put your name on this waiting list. She says, what's your name? And I say, uh, Piper. She gives me this look like, oh, oh gosh, okay. All right, so I'm going to go play ping pong, and I'll come back later. I come back 15 minutes later. I want to see if I can get my boat. I look on the waiting list. She wrote down Viper. <laughs> Like, what little kid is going to be like, yeah, they call me the Viper. <laughs> the Viper needs a canoe. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to stop with you guys, you bad guy. Anyway, you guys were a great audience.